Welcome to Chad Cruisers. My name is Brad, and the best way to see any city is through its public transportation system. Welcome to Toronto, and welcome to Bay Street. Bay Street is one of Toronto's most powerful and prestigious streets. Home to many of Canada's top financial institutions, the Toronto Stock Exchange, plus the home of the city government. It has plenty of influence over much of the city of Toronto and also Canada. Bay Street runs north-south right through the middle of downtown Toronto and was once served by streetcar lines until 1963. Diesel buses ran for a while until 1976 when it was converted to an electric trolley bus line. The environmentally friendly electric trolley buses ran until 1993 when, due to budget constraints, the trolley bus network was abandoned and replaced with diesel buses once again. Today, this Bay Bus serves Bay Street, as well as a portion of the eastern waterfront. So sit back, relax, and enjoy as we take you around Toronto by transit on the Bay Bus. We begin our journey on the Bay Bus at the southern terminus of the route, Queen's Quay and Sherburne. This area is known as East Bayfront and is one of Toronto's newest waterfront communities. Toronto grew as an industrial city in its early days, and this portion of the waterfront served mostly as a warehouse and port district. As time passed, the warehouses closed and were torn down, and redevelopment occurred. This area is now home to a beautiful park, and also the George Brown College. And the main attraction here, I find, is Canada's Sugar Beach. Sugar Beach is a fantastic place to unwind and enjoy views of the Toronto Harbour, as well as to watch operation at one of the last vestiges of Toronto's industrial past, Redpath Sugar. Redpath receives raw sugar from many parts of the world by ship and refines, packages and then ships that sugar all over Canada. One of the Red Path buildings features a large mural of humpback whales by artist Robert Wyland. Another development in the area is the Artscape Daniels building. Now let's hop back on board the Bay Bus and head west along Queen's Quay to Young Street. As we stand at the intersection of Queen's Key and Young, we're standing at the foot of the longest street in the world, which is of course, Young Street. Also at this intersection once sat Captain John's Seafood, a place many Torontonians will remember for its unique dining experience. Unfortunately, hard times fell upon Captain John's Seafood, and the restaurant closed and the ship was scrapped. Also not too far away from the Young and Queen's Key intersection is the beautiful Weston Harbour Castle offering visitors unique and beautiful views of Toronto's waterfront from its rooms. We now head west along Queen's Key and arrive at the street where the bus route is named after, Bay Street. It is here where the bus route turns and heads north for its journey to Dupont Street. This portion of Bay Street is also served by the Harbourfront Streetcar, which runs underground from here to Union Station. Steps away from this intersection is the Jack Layton Ferry Terminal, where many Torontonians take the ferry over to Toronto Islands to spend a wonderful day. The ferry terminal is named after the late Jack Layton, a politician who dedicated much of his life to public service to the City of Toronto and its citizens. A statue is located outside the terminal dedicated to his memory. At Bay and Lakeshore is the Scotiabank Arena, home of the Toronto Maple Leafs and the Toronto Raptors. The building incorporates the facade of the original Toronto Postal Delivery Building. Opened in 1941, the building served as a postal handling facility. Trains would arrive at the adjacent Union Station and mail would be transferred off the train into the building via underground tunnel. In 1989, the building closed as a postal sorting facility and sat disused until 1999 
when it was modified and repurposed as the Scotiabank Arena. Looking closely at the outside of the building, we may notice some limestone carvings which depict a history of transportation and communication in Canada. As we head north on Bay Street, we arrive at Front Street, where we find Toronto's Union Station, where the Bay Bus connects with the Young Subway Line, GO Transit, UP Express, and VIA Rail Trains. Also steps away is Toronto's beautiful Fairmont Royal York Hotel. Welcome to Toronto's Financial District, home to many towering office buildings, but it's here in 1904 where disaster struck Toronto. On April 19, 1904, a Toronto Police Constable spotted flames rising out of the elevator shaft of the E.S. Curry Building at Wellington and Bay Street. The fire, aided by high winds, quickly spread and destroyed over 100 buildings, decimating a large section of downtown Toronto. Firefighters were called in from as far away as Buffalo to assist. The fire raged for over nine hours before it was finally brought under control. Miraculously, no life was lost. However, it did cause over $10 million in damage. The area and businesses recovered and rebuilt from the ashes. And as time wore on, this area of Bay Street saw many high-rise office towers being built, and it became home to Toronto's financial district. Bay Street is also home to the Toronto Stock Exchange. You could say Bay Street is to Canada what Wall Street is to the United States. Toronto being Canada's financial capital. One interesting fact about Bay Street is that it used to be called Bear Street due to the frequent sightings of bears in Toronto's early days. It was renamed Bay Street later in 1797 because it connected the downtown area to the bay at Toronto Harbour. At Bay and King, the Bay Bus connects with the King Streetcar. Here we see First Canadian Place. At 298 meters tall, it is the tallest office skyscraper in Canada. You'll notice in these scenes that very few trees or greenery are along this part of Bay Street. This is due to the fact that all the high-rise towers allow for very little sunlight to make its way through. However, standing at the bottom of Bay Street and looking north towards Queen Street, you'll notice, glistening in the sun, Toronto's beautiful Old City Hall. At Bay and Queen, the street makes a slight jog as our TTC bus ride continues past Old City Hall. Here the Bay bus connects with the Queen Streetcar. Welcome to Old City Hall. Opened in 1899, it's built in the Romanesque revival style. And it shines like a beacon just down Bay Street. If you look down from the bottom of the bay to the top of Bay, you'll notice it shining in the sun. Absolutely gorgeous building. Old City Hall served as the home of the city government from 1899 to 1966 when that function moved to New City Hall across the street. For a while after the city functions moved to New City Hall, the building was threatened with demolition. However, public outcry saved the building and is now preserved today as a heritage structure. Today the building houses provincial courts. The cenotaph out front was unveiled on Remembrance Day 1925 to honor those who served in the First World War, and later, the Second World War. And just across the street from Old City Hall is one of the most recognizable landmarks in Toronto. 
Nathan Club Square, and City Hall. As early as 1943, the city decided that old City Hall was no longer meeting its needs and that a new building was required. In 1956, City Council, led by Mayor Nathan Phillips, decided to hold an international design competition for the new building. Over 500 designs were received from 42 countries all across the world. And the winner? This impressive structure, designed by Finnish architect Viljo Revel. The building officially opened in 1965 and to this day is one of Toronto's most iconic structures and continues to serve as the home of the city government. The plaza in front of City Hall is known as Nathan Phillips Square, named after Toronto's first Jewish mayor, who served from 1955 to 1962. The square plays host to many events, including concerts, public markets, ceremonies, and even protests. Our TTC bus ride on the Bay Bus continues north and we arrive at Bay and Dundas. Here we find the west side of the Toronto Eaton Centre and also the Ted Rogers School of Management. Here the Bay Bus connects with the 505 Dundas Streetcar. On Bay Street just north of Dundas is the Toronto Coach Terminal, opened in 1931 to serve inner city buses of the Grey Coach Lines. The main terminal building is of a beautiful Art Deco design. In the waiting area you can see there's a lovely staircase and window with beautiful stained glass. Also above is a beautiful stained glass skylight. In 2021 the terminal is due to close and inner city bus services are moving to the new Union Station bus terminal further south. The future of the building does remain uncertain although it is protected as a heritage structure. Also here between Dundas and College is some of the last evidence of streetcar service on Bay Street. Different streetcar routes served Bay until 1963 when the University subway line opened. Most of the tracks were removed on Bay Street except for this portion between College and Dundas which is used for route diversions and short turns. Next we arrive at the intersection of Bay and College home to the Toronto Police Services Headquarters. Just outside the building, we see the Little Glen statue, hauling a stone with a carving of the Toronto Police motto, to serve and protect. Across the street, we can see the McLaughlin Auto Car Showroom. Opened in 1925 as one of the first car dealerships in Toronto. The Gothic Revival style building operated as an automobile dealership until 2007 when it was closed. The building was preserved as a heritage structure and is an example of how many heritage buildings in Toronto are saved with the original facade and then a condo building or office tower being built over top. Our TTC bus ride on Bay Street continues north and we pass to Cloverhill Park which has some interesting sculptures. Welcome to the big donkey statue here on Bay Street. A lot of people don't know the story of why he's wearing casts. The bronze statue is called Primrose and is by Canadian artist Myfani McLeod. Why is Primrose wearing casts? Well, it is actually based off a baby donkey Primrose, born prematurely in England in 2012, and whose cuteness and heartwarming story captured hearts across the world. Primrose is definitely Bay Street's favorite ass. We now arrive at the intersection of Bay and Bloor, where the Bay bus connects with Line 2 of the TTC subway system. Here, many commuters off the subway line will catch the Bay bus to head down to the financial district. One business that many Torontonians will recognize here is Bay Bloor Radio. In 1946, Saul Mendelssohn established his radio sales and repair shop here at the intersection of Bay and Bloor, and over many years continues to be a very successful business, offering a wide range of electronics. In 1998, Saul passed away, but his legacy continues to live on here at the intersection of Bay and Bloor. 
Welcome to the neighborhood just north of Bloor Street known as Yorkville. Yorkville was founded in 1830 by entrepreneurs Joseph Bloor and William Jarvis, beginning at first as a residential suburb and later in 1880 was annexed by the City of Toronto. Yorkville retains much of its Victorian charm as seen here in this fire hall and public library. In the 1960s, Yorkville was home to Toronto's Artistic Centre, giving rise to such stars as Joni Mitchell, Neil Young and Gordon Lightfoot, as well as author Margaret Atwood. Yorkville today is well known for Toronto's high-end shopping district, as well as featuring some of Toronto's top restaurants and five-star hotels. Here we see Toronto's Four Seasons Hotel and Residences. As we continue our TTC bus ride north, we reach the top of Bay Street where the Bay Bus then heads west on Davenport Road. And Davenport Road is believed to be a part of an old First Nations trail which connected the Don River to the Humber River. At Davenport and Avenue Road, the Bay Bus passes the Avenue Diner, which has been serving fantastic meals since 1944. Unfortunately, new development is planned here and the diner may be closed so get your meals while you can. After traveling a few blocks along Davenport, the Bay Bus arrives at its northern terminus of DuPont Street. In July of 2021, due to the future openings of new rail lines in the city, the Bay Bus changed its route number from number 6 to number 19. The Bay Bus then makes its journey back to Queen's Quay in Sherburne via On Street Loop which goes by DuPont and Bedford Road. And so concludes our tour of the Bay Bus Line. If you've enjoyed this video please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to stay up to date for the latest uploads. Thanks for joining us today, we'll see you next time.